Hi, my name is uh, Clay Cockrell. I'm a, a practicing dermatologist and dermatopathologist in Dallas, Texas. I've been practicing here since 1988. And I've been asked today to discuss a little bit about the uh, new uh, genetic testing, the tape stripping technique that is used by the DermTech company. Uh, basically, they're looking at uh, a couple of different genes. The idea is you put the tape stripping on, the lesion send it off to a lab, and they get a genetic profile, whether the lesion is likely to be melanoma or not. And a recent study that's published in Skin uh, is actually looking at the value and the validity of this test, basically a retrospective study. It's kind of the only way you can really do these kind of studies uh, to see how many lesions that the test was actually documenting, diagnosing that were biopsied and shown to be melanoma or not melanoma. And they came up with a negative uh, predictive value of uh, about 99.2%, which is kind of good. That's basically saying, well, if you put this on there and it comes back as benign, it's very likely to be benign and a lower percentage, obviously, for positive predictive value, where if you put it on and, you know, basically then shows that it's a melanoma. And there, there were a few cases along the way that were missed. And we have quite a bit of experience with this test in our laboratory. We get biopsies submitted to us by uh, dermatologists, uh, not a whole lot, but several that are using it kind of routinely. And uh, they'll tell us what the results of the test is before they actually, uh, when they send the specimen to us. And the vast majority of the cases that we see, even though they're maybe positive with one or two of the genes, uh, are negative. They turn out to be dysplastic nevi or lesions that really are not serious and they can be followed. Uh, so basically what I think that's telling us is that dysplastic nevi may express some genes that may be in the cancer family. And, and if you leave them alone for many, many years, maybe some of them evolve into melanoma, but certainly at the time that we see this specimen, it's not melanoma at that time in the majority of cases. And then some of the lesions we see are because got some atypicality to them. We recommend that they be re-excised. That's still in the relative minority, but uh, certainly it's a very valuable sort of uh, test that you can do if you're dealing with a patient that, that it's maybe difficult to do biopsies on. Maybe they've already had a lot of biopsies. Maybe they've dysplastic nevus syndrome patient. So I think that's a real good use of this test. Obviously, if you look at something you think is being melanoma, you're going to biopsy it anyway. Uh, but if it's something that a patient may be reluctant to biopsy a lesion that you really think is a melanoma, you get back a positive genetic test on it, that can be a, a stimulus to make them get a biopsy. And then obviously it may decrease the number of biopsies you have to do in a patient that's got a lot of lesions. So I think this is a good test. It's one that's going to be used more and more in, in uh, the future. And uh, I think this is a good paper that demonstrates its validity and uh, the, the good negative predictive value, which is really definitely what you want to have if you're going to stop and not do a biopsy on the basis of a test. So I hope this was valuable to you and uh, good luck in using this test in your practice.